Welcome to the Monty Hall Show. Behind one of these doors is a big cash prize. Behind the two others, nothing. You can choose one door. That one? Right. Before we open that door, let's open one other door. It's empty. I'll now give you the chance to switch to the other unopened door. Will you switch or will you stay? The object is to maximize the probability of getting the prize and with only two doors to choose from, you want to choose the door that has more than 50% chance of containing the prize. Note that Monty Hall never had this setup in real life and has said that he never would. This is a thought experiment. This example of probabilistic reasoning is meant to illustrate that this may not be as intuitive as you may think. However, as it's described here, the probabilities are not uniquely defined, but are rather a function of what you believe concerning the described problem. A Bayesian way of solving this problem can be attempted, since it's clear that we want to update probabilities after getting some information. First off, I want to define things so the math will go, go a little smoother. The unobserved stuff that we're interested in is the door that contains the price, so we can call the three different options here the models. However, these models do not uniquely define the data probabilities, so we need to take a closer look at the data, as well as finding models that uniquely define the data probabilities. Back to the door models. The price can be behind the door you chose, let's call that model N, or it can be behind one of the other two. We can call that model M, and model M can be subdivided into model M1, the price is behind the leftmost of the doors you didn't choose, or it can be behind the rightmost M2. The data we got is that Monty Hall opened one unoccupied door. This can be divided in, into three components. One, he opened a door, he might not do that always. 2. The price was not behind that door. It could be that Monty Hall sometimes opened the door with the price and informs the participant that he or she didn't choose the correct one. 3. He could have opened the rightmost or leftmost of the doors he didn't choose. You could imagine that Monty Hall chose the rightmost if he had chosen the correct door and the leftmost if not and this door was unoccupied. In which case you may want to switch if he's chosen the leftmost and not if he's He's chosen the rightmost. But without any such info on how this strategy is, it would not be possible to handle this information. See Proposerous video for more about this type of Monty Hall strategy. But here I will not go further in this direction and simply strike off data 3 as irrelevant. So we've got two data to relate to. D2, the door is empty, has the correct characteristics which I described in clip 5. One submodel of a model has been falsified. Thus the probability for M must decrease. Or if the prior probability for an opening an unoccupied door is zero, the probability will stay the same. Normally we would not contemplate such a possibility. Who would want to falsify an already impossible model? But in this case, it could be that Monty Hall sits with privileged information and uses it. From symmetry, see clip 7, model N starts out with one third probability, while M is equal to N1 plus M2 starts out with probability two thirds. However, we would stay if the probability of M uh, drops below one half, which it doesn't necessarily do. If you take a look on the number line representing the probability for M, that is, the price is behind one of the other doors, we start off with two thirds, and we switch if the posterior probability is greater than 50% and stay if not. So we don't know if we should switch or not just from this, and of course we haven't handled data 1 yet. The problem only describes a one-off event, however, in order to update the probabilities, we need to know how likely that one-off event is. Fortunately, we need only look at the set of Monty Hall playing rules, which has the one-off outcome as a possibility. But there can be a wide variety of behavior that can deliver the described results. Here yeah, I will not go into every possibility, but rather try to span out the possibilities with some archetypal examples. 
Now I assign a probability to Monty Hall's behavior and the first specification is the one that's meant. It's a real pity that this normally isn't specified when the Monty Hall problem is described. This strategy is simply that Monty Hall will always produce the data described in the problem. It will always open a door you didn't choose and that door will always be empty. So, data 1 and data 2 are irrelevant and will not change the probability for you having chosen the right door. See clip 6 for more on irrelevant info. The probability for n still stays the same. Irrelevant info may sound bad, but in this case it's good. We started off with a probability of one third for choosing the right model and two thirds for choosing the wrong one. Since the probabilities do not change, you will still have a one-third probability of getting the price if you stay, and two-thirds probability if you switch, so you definitely want to switch. You can also see this by this graphical representation of the three possibilities before the data arrives. When you got the data, one unoccupied door is removed, and you can see that in two of the cases, you will choose the price by switching and in only one of the cases you'll get it by staying. The second possible strategy that can cause the data you've got is that Monty Hall has no privileged information or does not use that privileged information. If you've chosen incorrectly he'll then have a 50% chance of opening the door with the price. In this case, if he is open an unoccupied door, the probability for you having chosen it correctly is the same as the probability for you having chosen incorrectly, namely 50%. So staying or switching is all the same. This strategy may seem reasonable as Monty Hall does not use privileged info. In strategy 1, he needs to know the whereabouts of the price in order to avoid opening the door with the price. Using that info in the strategy may feel for some like cheating, which may be part of the reason why so many answers that staying or switching doesn't matter. If first privilege info is used in the strategy, the worms are out of the can. How much cheating can be achieved when Monty Hall uses privileged info? That brings us to the sneaky third option. Monty Hall opens the door with the price if given the chance, i.e. if you've chosen incorrectly. Only if you've chosen correctly will he open an unoccupied door and offer a switch. The probability of getting the price by staying conditioned on the data is then 100%. You'll only get the price by staying. So this gives another result than the intended interpretation. Of course, you only get the data in one third of the cases. Strategy 4 is more of the same. Now Monty Hall only opens an unoccupied door if you've chosen correctly. So data 1 is no longer irrelevant. The probability of getting D1 is now 1 if n is true and 0 if not. D2 is now irrelevant though. The posterior probability for n and m, uh, given the data, is the same as for strategy 3, and the probability for getting the data is also the same. The last strategy I'll describe is that Monty Hall only opens an unoccupied door if you've chosen incorrectly. Again, d2 is irrelevant while d1 is highly relevant. Of course, you'll always want to switch when given the chance in this scenario. There are infinitely many other strategies, as can be seen by simply combining the strategies defined here. For instance, Monty Hall could uh, flick a coin or throw a die and decide whether to adopt strat strategy 1 or 4. Or he could in some cases stick you with your choice independently of what you chose. So there's all kind of hybrid strategies too. Webb Snarf describes one of those in his video. The strategies I've described here can be called archetypal strategies. Maybe there's even more of those. The conclusion is that there's no fixed answer to the problem as it's usually stated. If it's stated so that it's clear that strategy 1 is used, 
Then it's a small matter to find the probabilities using the ir irrelevant data principle from clip 6. If this isn't specified, the question is what are your personal probabilities for the strategies of Monty Hall? This has been a much more involved presentation of the Monty Hall problem than what is usual. The object here was partially to say that if you want to present the problem, uh, do it right or not at all. Uh, unless you want to delve into strategies and subjective probabilities. For the specially interested, an extended manuscript and slides are given.